when you come to Grand Teton National Park, you can feel a bit overwhelmed. Where do you go? What do you do? Like, what, what do you see? Should I go climb the Grand? Well, you can't see it because it's smoky. That's always an issue. Uh, should I hike to a lake? Uh, go fishing in the river? What do I want to do? Well, if you're a general tourist and you're just traveling around, there are a couple points I'm going to tell you about in this video and give you some ideas of places to start. Traveling in Grand Teton, it's one of the most spectacular national parks in the United States. Although Yellowstone is far more famous and big time geysers and all this, Grand Teton is America's Alps. Now, America's Alps at the moment you could just barely see through the smoke haze from California, but you could check that out. See, these mountains rise over 6,000 feet from the valley floor. The, there's some sort of fault over there where the mountains are actually uplifting and the valley is falling. Now, don't worry about that. It's not like it's happening. It's for like a quarter an inch or an inch a year. Or so, something totally irrelevant. There are earthquakes here, but don't worry about that. It rarely, rarely happens. <gasps> no, no, just kidding. But what do you do when you want the ultra highlight tour? You want to get in, get out, and check a couple of spots real quick? What I suggest is that you drive along the highway from Jackson towards Moran, and that's the connector on the north part of Grand Teton National Park that takes you over to Yellowstone. Now, along this highway are a bunch of turnoffs, and they give you everything. And the one I'm going to tell you to skip is the Moose Turnoff because that takes you into Grand Teton National Park in the main part of the park. Now, interestingly, driving along this road, the road that you see behind me and in front of me, you're actually in Grand Teton National Park. When, uh, when you come up out of Jackson and you go right past the, was it, the, uh, the fish hatchery, and you come up on this rise on the bench, and you see this big sign, Grand Teton National Park, and you see people pulled over, that actually is the entrance to the park. It's one of those rare parks where you don't actually go through one of those entrance gates, you show your pass and all that. It's like, oh, hey, are you, are you really in the park? Yes, trust me. I'm going 55 miles an hour right now. I've had some people pass me at 65 and 70. Just recommend and don't do that. The park does not take lightly to people speeding in it, uh, just trust me. And there's a reason for that. Pronghorn antelope, or they're not antelope, they're called pronghorn, grizzly bear, elk, they all cross the road in the middle of the day. They're very difficult to see. And I've seen very tragic crashes with animals killed, cars damaged, people injured because they didn't pay attention to the speed limit. Now, as I'm going along here, you'll see that I'm headed towards this stand of trees. And what I want you to do is when you think, oh, sorry, when you're heading for, uh, you know, the Grand Teton National Park, if you take all the pullouts and all the turnoffs and you spend maybe two hours doing that, you'll actually get a great overview of the park. Right when you leave the park, there's, of course, the pull, or the Jackson, there's the pull-off for the Grand Teton sign, and that's super sweet. But then as you go along, you'll see all these different pull-outs, Albright Corner, Glacier View, and all this. The first one you're going to come into and encounter is the Blacktail Ponds, and that's a beautiful overlook. It gives you a beautiful overlook, these ponds. It's actually very lightly visited. The second one that you'll come to is Schwabackers. It's kind of a strange name, but trust me, you want to go down there. If you can go down there early, it's well worth the time and effort. The next one you'll come to, and of course we're going to skip uh, Moose, is this one right here, just ahead. And this is the Snake River Overlook. The Snake River Overlook is where Ansel Adams took his very famous photo of the Snake River the Tetons, and all the beautiful trees. Now do note, you cannot get that photograph anymore because the river has subtly shifted and the trees have dramatically grown up. So trying to replicate Ansel Adams' photograph is not possible. Uh, people try it, uh, you can actually get like a 20 foot painter's pole and do that. By the way, do not use drones in the national park. They are 
verboten here, so you don't want to do that. The next place that you're going to come to when you go along this snaky road right here is Dead Man's Bar. And Dead Man's Bar is a great little access point for rafters. This is a place where a lot of the tours put in. You'll see tour boats in there all the time. And Dead Man's Bar, after you drop your phone, <laughs> Dead Man's Bar, it's also kind of a nice place for fishing. I've gone down there, had some pretty good success fly fishing, so it's not too bad. But you'll notice this dense forest here. I've seen, unfortunately, bears killed, elk killed along here. So there's a very good reason why you want to stick to that 55 mile an hour speed limit. Now, if you're from LA or San Diego or Louisiana or wherever, where you're used to driving 75, 80, this feels like you can almost hop out and crawl. Well, not quite, unless you can ride, run 55 miles an hour. But the number of animals I've seen killed, you just trust me on this. And as you go through this area, you'll come into another open flat area, and there will be a place called Cunningham Cabin. That's one of the last cabins still standing in the flats in the Grand Teton National Park area. And there's actually a famous shootout that happened way, way long ago. And it's a really interesting little 0.3 mile hike around there that is featured in my Jackson Hole hiking guide too. So it's really nice to check out. If you want a diversion from Cunningham Cabin, you can go across the road and drive into the forest. And if you take the left bank or the, the left fork, you can go up to a place called the observatory. Now right now, 2020, it's crazy here. It looks like an RV parking lot, but if you want some great views a little bit above the landscape to check out the mountain range and everything else, pretty, pretty sweet. Past there, you'll go past uh, Elk Ranch Road, Ool Hill, and then you get it to Elk Ranch Flats. That is often a spectacular location to check out bison and pronghorn. So often, both of those species are out there doing their thing. When the bar, let's see, where the bear and the antelope play, well, the bear don't generally play out there unless they're predating on baby pronghorn or baby elk or baby bison. But generally, yeah, it's a perfect place. There's a huge turnout, you'll see hordes of people. If you're driving from Jackson, driving north, you look to your right and you'll see, man, those cows look really dark, almost black, and they look funny shaped. Those aren't cows, those are bison. Now, are they bison or buffalo? Well, some call them buffalo. They fit the buffalo um, ecological purpose in this uh, greater Yellowstone environment, but they're actually named bison, and their scientific Latin name is bison bison. We're all lazy and we call them buffalo anyway, but don't worry. Unless you end up with one of those stuck up, that is totally wrong, people. Don't worry about it. So that is a great place to look. And while you're driving past this, you'll drive past this mountain to your right, and that is called Shadow Mountain. That right now is one of the crazy busiest places in the entire park for camping. It's uh, on campendium.com and all these other websites, so it's uh, it's pretty wild. Um, great for hiking. I've got a couple little trails up there. But if you show up at six o'clock in the evening thinking, hey, I'm gonna go camp on Shadow Mountain, <laughs> you're screwed, dude, or chick, or whatever. So definitely be aware. If you're looking for a campsite, don't go looking in the evening because you simply won't find them. It's just not gonna happen right now in 2020. Maybe later, who knows, but that uh, that is the case. And once you get past Shadow Mountain, and Elk Ranch Flats where you see the pronghorn maybe, which happens to be the fastest land animal in North America. How fast is this bad boy? 55 miles an hour. I have clocked driving 55 miles an hour, exactly cruise control on and the whole thing. I have looked to my side and there's a pronghorn running through the sage right beside me. It's just unreal. Now you might wonder, why would the pronghorn need to run that fast? I don't know. Apparently God made them because they need to run fast. 
in theory there were old predators that have died off in the last ice age or you know whatever uh, whatever that might have been able to predate on the pronghorn but man that that animal just 55 miles an hour the only faster animal land animal on earth is the cheetah so if you want to look out and you see one of those animal or pronghorn running it's pretty sweet once you get past there you're going to go along the snake river you're going to see oh the snake river that the, the creeks and the river sorry thinking snake river and you'll see ool hill and elk ranch road and all this it's real fun to drive through as well and then by that time you're going to run into another 45 mile an hour section you're going to go over the river and very soon you're going to come to Moran Junction where you're going to turn into the park and then allows access to North Grand Teton and then also ultimately Yellowstone National Park. One other pointer for you is to be aware that driving is slow here. People say, oh yeah, I'm going to go from Jackson. I'm going to go up, check out Old Faithful and we'll be back, back by lunch. <laughs> Negative, wrong, not gonna happen. It is far, and even though it may say 60 or 90 miles to the park entrance, you gotta remember you, you're used to driving 80 miles an hour from most places you're from. You can't drive 80 miles an hour here. On the highway that I'm on right now, 55 max and 45 at night, and I've seen a lot of people pulled over when they didn't obey that speed limit. And then once you get into the park and you go through the Grand Teton National Entrance in the North Entrance, it's 45 miles an hour max. And many sections are 25 and 30 miles an hour. And then when you get into uh, the park, it's another half hour drive to Flag Ranch and then a little bit more to the South Entrance. And then you're just at the South Entrance and then you're gonna run into bison jams and all sorts of other stuff. So just be aware that when you're driving from point to point and park to park, it takes a long time. If you think you're going to go to Yellowstone, plan for a full day. I know it sounds crazy. I know it doesn't look far on the map. And Google tells you, or your map app or whatever you're using, tells you you can knock that sucker out by noon. Don't believe it, I'm a local trust me on this huge experience Yellowstone is an all-day venture so just a point when you come out of Jackson Hole if you want a quick highlight tour Schwabacker's Landing, Blacktail uh, Ponds Overlook, Snake River Overlook maybe pop into Moose and you'll have a great great time of getting some of the most spectacular overviews that when you're too close to the mountains you can't actually see them my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventure and professional traveler. And I wrote the Jackson Hole Hiking Guide. Check out the link below. And if you found this video useful, please like and comment on it and subscribe to the channel as well. And yeah, have a good time traveling. Enjoy your views of Grand Teton National Park and be safe out there. Thank you very much for watching.